All right. Hi, Jody. So yay. Uh, uh, reflection time on my creative work. Finally, it's done. Um, it was a little bit overwhelming for me at first. I was a little bit intimidated by creating my own work because I've never done it before. I've never actually wrote my own song. So I was, I was a little bit nervous about the whole process and I would do some of it and I would leave it and I'd kind of procrastinate on it. Um, for a while and then finally I got going and then it wasn't as bad as what I thought it was going to be. Anyway, jumping right into inspiration. So my inspiration for this song, I'm sure maybe you noticed by the lyrics, um, it's very faith-based. So I am a Christian. Uh, I was saved in 2016 but then walked away from God um, given my life circumstances and then came back about six months ago. So I guess you can really say that was when I got saved. Um, but ever since six, seven months ago, I've been walking with the Lord and I'm I'm on that path and loving every moment of it. So that was my inspiration for the song. Another major inspiration was my life experience. That one is huge. That's what this is basically based upon is my faith meets my life experience and just reflecting on that. Uh, for me, it was finding my purpose, my purpose in life. Um, I always felt as from a child that I was always an outcast. I was never the one that was in the limelight, wasn't the popular kid. I wasn't the cool kid. I wasn't the kid that everybody liked. And, and that's followed me into adulthood, unfortunately. But I also faced lots of spirit of rejection because of my upbringing, I didn't really have my dad um, that was close to me. He rejected me as a child. So I just kind of like lived with that spirit of rejection. And I got that along of for a lot in my life. And um, it followed me, like I said, in, into adulthood. And music is where I kind of shined I shined I succeeded I was good at it I'm still good at it of course <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't be in faculty music but um, music for me was my thing and something I really cling to to battle that to battle those feelings of being rejected and so later on in life I, I always question well where did I fit into the world just in my relationships with people but then as I got older, that unfortunately followed me. So when I got into um, even the faculty of music and my own musical journey, being in Edmonton, I succeeded. I always succeeded. I always did well. I never had any, not to toot my own horn, but I never had any performance anxiety. I would go up there. I would sing. It would all be good. And as soon as I started in the faculty of music and I had to do lots of habits, I was humbled big time and developed a lot of performance anxiety. And when I started to audition for roles recently, like Manitoba Underground Opera, um, I, I faced some rejection, even in... in just throughout my years being in the faculty. And so that kind of fed into the anxiety that I had and I would avoid performance and all this other stuff. So I didn't know at one point, like if I questioned God, like, do I even belong here? Is this something that you want me to be doing? You gave me this desire, but where do I fit in? Because it doesn't seem to be always working out. So then I switched to Ed. I was in performance before I switched to music Ed. So that is also a, an inspiration. And so just not knowing what my path is and being able to trust God in the uncertain times um, is really important for me because sometimes we don't have the answers. I, I don't have the answers to my life. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where God's taking me and I still feel that. So being able to walk and have that trust in God. Not knowing the outcome is like, was my inspiration. I'm getting teary eyed just thinking of it. Um, but yeah, so for me, sorry. <sighs> oh, 
Matthew versus Matthew 6.33 and Jeremiah 29.11 were the scriptures that really helped me in writing, in, in, in writing the lyrics for this. So God's put it on my heart. Matthew 6.33, which is seek first the kingdom of God. And the rest will be added unto you. And it just made sense to me. I'm like, yeah, I, I'm going to write about this. And Jeremiah 29, 11, the comfort and the uncertainty. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. These two verses are some of my favorites. So I had to, had to uh, write my lyrics based on that. And just having the confidence that he gives us and the promises he promises us these things in his word and so major influence for me um another influence for me uh an inspiration was country music so being a classical singer i did not grow up with classical music i grew up with country music it is some of the music that I basically was first introduced in my life. It's something I've had since childhood. It's always been around. And so I fell in love with the modern country. I grew up with the old and new, the Johnny Cash, Dolly Parton, all of it. But fell in love with the new country as well. And so Morgan Wallen has just been an artist I've been into recently. Morgan Wallen and Luke Combs. Um... I love how the music is clean. It's not really a lot of profanity in it. Uh, clean music. Um, I love his voice, the style, the lyrics are relatable for me. That was huge. Country music is super relatable. Well, pop is too, but I really find like a lot of country music can be super relatable, at least for me anyway. Um, just the overall simplicity of it. I love it. Like, it's simple. Life is complicated. Why not just enjoy simplicity sometimes? Um, and always that perfect cadence at the end. You can always predict, well, pop music too, but you can always predict the way country is going to end. You just hear it and you know where it's going to. And that's just, it's like, I love it. Love it so much. Um, when I was getting the chords for my song, <laughs> funny um when I was getting the chords for my song I did use the chrome music lab so I, I started on chrome music lab the arpeggios and chords and I would just plunk them out like we did in class and came up with a bunch of different combinations and finally I came up with the combination um that I have in my song uh with the key of D major and the combination of chords that I use not knowing um I'm like these kind of like I'm so gravitating to them like I don't know why um then later that day I was listening to Morgan Wallen and his song believe it or not titled don't think Jesus uses the exact same chords <laughs> that I picked for my song what are the odds I don't know um actually the odds are probably really good because they're very common chords apparently I found that out later <laughs> So, uh, yeah, Don't Think Jesus by Morgan Wallen was also another inspiration. If you haven't listened to it or you're not familiar with it, highly recommend listening to it. It's a great song. So relatable. Um, very inspiring. I love it. Uh, so, yeah, that was, again, a huge inspiration. And, of course, worship music. Um, I listen to lots of faith-based music as well, more so than country now than anything um so yeah faith-based music was also you know was also my influence and I thought well it says in the bible if you're gonna do do everything for the glory of God and so I was like yes I am going to do this and glorify God while I do it so killing two birds with one stone always um okay intention uh, so I wanted to write something heartfelt, um, that could be relatable all while keeping things simple. I like simple, um, wanted to be a little bit different and spread the gospel, 
but making a personal connection. That was um, the main thing for me, was making it relatable and making it personable. Because anybody could write a song about absolutely anything. I could write a song about going to school. I could write a song about the bus. I could write a song about the summer. And I mean, this is all great, but I wanted to make it relatable on a personal level. Um, my thoughts and future steps. Uh, I am impressed with myself. I never actually thought I'd be able to write a song. Surprisingly, it was easier than I thought. I was overwhelmed in the initial stages, but then once I got going and really like established my chords, I was like, Kate, I know my chords. I know my inspiration. I'm just going to get to it. And then from there, I was just in development mode. Um, uh, elaborating, right. So yes, I would like to elaborate probably on the chords. I did use more simplistic chords. I did use different inversions, but I used simplistic chords. Um, I did keep it relatively simple just because my piano skills, <laughs> my piano skills aren't always like great. I, I don't have the, the best piano skills. And so what I probably would do in moving forward, what I, I probably would add sevenths, maybe some ninth chords, some suspensions to make it a little bit different because it was a little bit, I, I didn't really use any of that. I didn't use any sevens or suspensions. Um, so yeah, being able to incorporate that to, to make, add some extra color, I think is just what I would do next. Um, I'd probably add some harmony in the voice. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, yes, harmony in the voice would be important for me. Again, adding color, it's just going to add more color to it. A little bit more variation, keep it a little bit exciting. And I'd like to eventually add some guitar to give it more of a country vibe. So that was important for me, being able to, to give it a country vibe. Um, what I have learned about creating music. So I'm going to kind of answer uh, what have I learned about facilitating and also creating music. So I'll kind of answer these together. Uh, it's not a one size fits all. It's It, it really isn't. It, it isn't. And, and I know that's something that's such a like a no-brainer thing to say but it, it's important it's not a one size fits all and we have to be comfortable stepping outside of our com comfort zones and allowing us to break the rules that we were taught in music school it it, it like it blows my mind because we're taught all these rules you got to go by this this is how music is right but then at the end of the day Music could be anything, right? It, it it could be, right? And I learned that in this course that there's no right or wrong way. I mean, there is to a certain extent, but <laughs> if somebody is creating something and it's their own work, they can do whatever with it that they choose. Now, I have to comment um on uh the peer teaching the first peer teaching i did your feedback i loved it um but me answering this question reminds me about your feedback with max how i was telling him to resolve to the tonic and i love your point ultimately it's his piece and he has to do with it what he wants to do right um, it's fine to make the suggestion, yes, but maybe it was because he's family. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. But yes, how for me as a teacher, I have to learn to allow the students to create. And that is definitely something I'm going to have to work at because I'm somebody that's kind of like, I went through the RCM way. So for me, it's kind of like, got to do it this way and this is how it's done um so for me it's learning how to you know just be open and, and break the rules just a little bit you know uh okay yes for me the gosling theory was big it, that's my main takeaway from all this of course there's so many especially in the in the book the, the hickey book but the gosling theory 
yeah, uh, I didn't really ever look at it from that perspective of, okay, this is the phase we have our inspiration, we have our development, and then we have our, our distancing where we take a step back and, and we kind of revisit our work and make adjustments. Um, but I did notice, I did pay attention to, I did reflect on it. Um, after I was done creating my piece. So I'm like, wait, what was my process? So for me, it started with kind of development, kind of development first, but still inspiration. It was weird because for me, it started with the chords. So I was plunking out chords, getting chord combinations. And then I started with inspiration. I'm like, okay, now what is, what can I do to fit this? And I was like, oh, right, well, I want to write a worship song or, or like a gospel song that would be country because I like these chords. So I already had my inspiration. So it was my chords and my inspiration. Then it was my development. So then I started with like lyrics and then noodling around with the chords and trying to create like a melody with that. Then I got all that done. So I did verse, chorus, verse, then bridge. And then obviously I had the course again and just kind of elaborated. And then at the end, I kind of took a step back and I was like, well, what else could I add to this? So then I went back and I'm like, well, there's no introduction. So then I added an intro and I'm like, let's keep it simple. Think country, think Alan Jackson, think it's always a very simple like melody in the beginning. That's just country music. So I created like a very simple uh, intro that made sense. And I thought, well, I'll repeat that for my second verse. And then for the end, I kind of ended with a piece of the course and then ended with like a chord and a little arpeggiation. And yeah, very, very basic. But um, yeah, so I kind of, I, I did somewhat follow that, right? It, I, but I know that it's not a, where you have to like, follow it to a T. So, um, but I was able to reflect on that and point out, okay, this is when I was in the opening phase. This is when I was in the product productive action phase and the separation phase. So being able to, to notice when I was within those phases was kind of interesting to me. Um, and yes, the, the Hickey book, I love a lot of the lesson plans. So when I was doing my plan for peer teaching too, I uh, was looking through so many um, of her exercises and yeah, I, uh, they're all great, honestly. Um, a really great tool for me to take into my teaching and super important because I feel like they do provide a good scaffolding to getting the students to create something themselves. Um, and I like it because you can add a little bit of parameters, you can take parameters away. Um, but yeah, it, it's an excellent guide to, to get the students to start creating. So for me, those were obviously her lesson plans, um, goals lens theory, and just being able to allow the students to create. Um, yeah, that those are, those are the main things for me. And being able to not be so cut and dry um, with my own teaching, thinking that this is how it is. And, and like I said, there's, there's a time for that, but then we have to know, okay, when can we break the rules a little bit and allow them to actually create something that is their own creation and not just here's a set of rules and you have to do it this way now go so yeah and that's it